Howard Hughes lived the American dream. He was wealthy beyond belief, dated beautiful movie stars, and made record-breaking flights. But the man who could have it all for years just wanted to be left alone. Because of that, much of his life has remained a mystery until now. Author Richard Hack uncovers America's first billionaire in his new book, simply called Hughes. Richard Hack, good morning. Good simply, to see you. Thank you very much. Matt. You, you, you say, I'm fine, thank you. You say this is a different perspective on Howard Hughes because the other books have been written based on stories told by people who knew him. You think this is his point of view. How could that be? Well, I made the effort to try to get inside his mind. Uh, this is, a, a, you know, he was America's first million, a billionaire, and he was a famous film producer after all. He did, you'll recall, uh, the, the Outlaw with Jane Russell and the Breasts, and he w won the first Oscar award for the best comedy film. He also flew around the world setting records. He also uh, bought half of Las Vegas, and he also was America's number one defense contractor, and he dated all those beautiful women that you know, uh, uh, Catherine Hepburn, right. Betty Davis, Landon Turner. But the fact was, this is a man that absolutely was elusive. To everyone who knew him, it they elusive. knew him differently. So you interview someone, and they will give you a different story each time. He demanded his privacy. He was obsessive about it, and yet... Yes. He had the people who worked for him keep detailed records of right. every move he made from the time he ate right. to the time he went to the bathroom. Why? This is, the, this is the story. He did not have that done. They did it so they could keep track and refer to it because he was so compulsively controlling that when he would talk to them, they'd have to know exactly what he was talking about. He had an incredible memory. Did so he know they were keeping these records? No. They, he did not know they had the records, and when he found out about it, he wanted them all destroyed as they were going. He thought they were destroyed. The fact that they weren't destroyed would have killed him if he hadn't already and, been And dead. it's some of those documents that were kept about him that you scoured to yes, write this book. Uh, over 110,000 pages I rifled through. You say he was known as a great ladies man. However, comma, you say perhaps that was a bit of a myth, that he was not all that great a lover. He dated Catherine Hepburn. Yes, he certainly did. She moved in with him at, right. at one point, brought the maid, the butler, and the three dogs. Mm -hmm. Why did she move out? What happened between the two of them? Well, she found out that he was dating Betty Davis. That sort of ha puts a crimp on things, you know, when you think you're the only one. He proposed to all these ladies, mind you. And then they'd all find out that he had exactly. somebody else on well, the when, side. When Ginger Rogers found out, she threw a bag full of jewelry at him, only to learn the next day that he also repossessed her station wagon that he had given her. We have a photo that I think was the last picture ever taken of Howard Hughes, and the weird thing is it was taken 25 years before he died. That's why right. Did, why did he <laughs> retreat so thoroughly from the public? Well, for one thing, he didn't have to deal with them. He w had so much money that he could lay naked in a bed, blacked out room, talking on the telephone, and do all his business. Everybody else was out there doing it. And on top of that, he was a sociopath. He didn't like people. He didn't like even his aides, who were the only people he saw, he didn't allow to talk to them. You talk about the cleanliness issue, the fear of germs. Yes. In, perhaps a, a result of the way his mother oh, raised him. Definitely. She would wash him down with lye soap every morning. She would check his teeth like a horse. She looked in the toilet at his feces to see if there was tape worms. But mind you, it was a time that there were malaria, typhoid. There were epidemics everywhere, so she was concerned. Here are the rules for when someone would come into the room where he was staying. This is part of a memo. It says, before opening the door to the room, right. the man is to stand with a folded newspaper in his right hand, rapidly wave it for at least a minute to eliminate the possibility that flies will enter the room. Using eight Kleenexes placed in the left hand, the man who's rapidly waving the newspaper will knock on the door. When HRH responds, the man will open the door using the hand with the Kleenex. I mean... Right, as opposed to the dirty hand. I mean, hello, Howard, you know. The, the man was a bit compulsive, let's face it, but on the other hand, he was absolutely the most amazing man that America has ever created, ever. Okay, I have got to interrupt you right now. Sorry. Richard Hack, thank you very much. We appreciate it. The book is called Hughes. We want to go live right now and show you a picture of the World Trade Center, where I understand... Do we have it? No, we do not. We have a breaking story, though. We're going to come back with that in just a moment. First, this is today on NBC. Why drive all over town to compare cars? Make one stop at CarMax and test drive an Accord, Taurus, and Camry. We have nearly every make and model, 10 times more cars than the average dealer. So you get the car you want. CarMax, the way car buying should be. Why do warehouse clubs and superstores offer the lowest prices? Because they sell in volume. 
CarMax, the auto superstore, has up to 10 times more cars than the average dealer, so we can afford to offer below Blue Book prices. CarMax, the way car buying should be. Welcome to Wardrobe 911. These three friends came to us with a problem. How do you get that designer look without breaking the bank? Wow, great designer. Fortunately, it's Designer Week at Ross. We found some of the top labels at fabulous prices. At Designer Week, you'll find the latest in career and casual clothing at unbelievable savings. That looks so expensive. Oh, thank you. Thank Designer Week at Ross. And you can do it, too. Designer Week at Ross. Don't miss it. What makes you smile? Every day at McDonald's, we're serving up a variety of great tastes at breakfast. Whether you like scrambled eggs with pancakes, egg McMuffins, sausage biscuits with egg, or our delicious bagel sandwiches, we've got something hot, fresh, and made to order just for you. And remember, no breakfast is complete without coffee and the cool, fresh-squeezed taste of Minute Maid orange juice. Start off your day, every day, with breakfast variety at McDonald's. We love to see you smile. As Matt just mentioned, we have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. It happened just a few moments ago, apparently. We have very little information available at this point in time. But on the phone, we do have Jennifer Oberstein, who apparently witnessed this event. Jennifer, can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Katie. Hi. Can you please tell me what you saw and to give me any information about what's going on there? Yes, I have to tell you, um, it's, it's quite terrifying. I'm in shock right now. I came out of the subway at Bowling Green. I was heading to work in Battery Park at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, and I come out, and it, I saw a big, I heard a boom looked up, and there was a big ball of fire. I'm now looking north at the World Trade Center, and it is the West Twin Tower, if I'm looking north. I'm in Battery Park right now, and you can hear the fire engines and the emergency and emergency crews behind me. And it is unbelievable. When the fire first burst, it was a... Hello? Go yes, ahead. Go we ahead. can hear you. ...in air like I've never seen before. Um, and I, as you know, I used to work in news. I've never seen any fire like this in the air. And the pieces of the building were flying down. It looks like... It's the, it's like the top, I can't even tell you, maybe 20 floors. Intense smoke, it's, it's horrible, it's, I, I, I can't even describe it. Do you have any idea what kind of plane it was? I'm sorry? Do you have any idea what hit the World Trade Center? What it was? Yeah, what kind of plane? We're getting reports that an airplane hit the building. Oh, it was, I, I didn't even know that. Honestly, I was walking up and it looked up and saw a big boom and fire. You know, I gotta tell you, we were all saying around here that it was very interesting that it would be a bomb and it would be so high up. So it, perhaps, it, perhaps it was a plane. We have no, no talk of a plane. However, I have to tell you, there's still, there's still things flying in the air. I mean, it, it's mind-boggling and it was, it's horrifying. Jennifer, it's Matt Lauer. I, I'd like to ask you, while you were close to the building, or, or have you, since the explosion, seen anyone who's been injured being taken out of the building? Are there ambulances dealing with people on the sidewalk around the building? No, I have not. I, I have not gotten that close. I have to tell you that my father works in the World Financial Center, and I first called over there to see, because it's next door, to see, you know, if, if he was okay. I couldn't get through, and I'm far away right now. I thought it might be a little dangerous to get too close. I saw lots of, lots of debris coming down, and right now I'm in Battery Park. I don't know, you know, it's, it's only, it's probably five-minute walk from here to the World Trade Center, but the smoke is incredible. I mean, I can't see the top of the tower. It's starting to cover the top of the second tower. In fact, we're looking at pictures right now, Jennifer, with a huge gaping hole on the side of the building and billowing smoke, so... I'm right now, you see, yeah, I'm, I think, I, I see major fire. I definitely see fire. Um, and Je Jennifer, you said you're looking north at the building, so in other words, you're south of the building, yes, is that right? Um, Correct. Be because we're looking at a picture that is looking at the north side of the uh, building. I'm on the exact opposite side. And, and it appears that is where the largest hole is. And again, as you mentioned correctly, toward the top of the building, but on the north side. And then on the, what I think is the west side of the building, we can also see some holes there that could have been from damage once the impact occurred. Again, we've been told that if this is a plane, we don't have confirmation on that, but there is an enormous hole in the north side of that building. Jennifer, can you tell us a little bit more about what you heard when you heard this explosion? Describe it for us. Absolutely. When I uh, walked out of the subway, I looked at the Twin Towers because 
I mean, I just always look up there, and uh, right when I looked up, there was a boom. It wasn't it wasn't that loud. Like, it wasn't huge. However, what was 